Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Highbridge 2023. We're so excited to have you join us on the broadcast for this major event. We are here at the Miller Communications Building for our live stream of the film festival. We are a little less than 30 minutes out from the start of the event, but we have a whole pre-show for those of you joining us online. Tonight, we are going to be bringing you an exclusive behind the scenes look at the festival. There will be interviews with the directors from many of the films that you will see later tonight. But before that, we'll take a look at the class that put this all together, have a live reporter show us what Hughes looks like, and so much more. We have a great show before the major event is underway, so you will definitely want to stay tuned. Every year, Asbury University hosts the major production that is Highbridge. People come from far and wide to enjoy the event, but what most people don't see is the class that puts it all together. Professor Todd Wald is in charge of the special events course that creates this whole entire event for us. Let's take a closer look at the course and the students who make it all possible. Special events, an unsuspecting name for a crucial course here at Asbury. The class led by Professor Todd Wold is responsible for the entirety of the Highbridge Film Festival, from the planning and building stages all the way to the execution of the large-scale event later tonight. I'm Professor Todd Wold and I am the director of Highbridge Film Festival and the professor of the special events class at Asbury. And my name is Alexis Jones and I am on the Hughes Live production team and I am also the writer, director and producer of the Highbridge intro video this year. I am Anna Okison. I am this year's production assistant as well as on the Miller After Party team. I'm Ellen Morton and I'm on the PR team. My name is Spencer Harvey and I am on the live production team. My name is Lucas Hammond and I am a member of the design team for Highbridge. I'm Sarah Driscoll and I'm a part of the Miller team and so we are planning the Miller After Party. My name is Grace Statzer and I'm on the design team for Highbridge. At the beginning of the semester, the small nine-person class came together to help design the concept and then divided up and took on roles of their various teams. We have our students in the special events class come up with ideas um, and it's from all the different teams that we have. We have a, a webcast team, we have a Hughes production team that does the showcase and award show, we've got a design team, PR team video team and the after party team and all of those teams intersect with this theme so they're all a part of coming up with ideas for a particular year's theme. For students in the class there was a variety of reasons prompting them to join the course for future job aspirations to class requirements. So I attended the film festival last year and I really wanted to see what went behind the scenes into making it a reality and I think we've done a really good job this year. I was a part of the Highbridge um, planning class last year and I really enjoyed my role in that and so I wanted to do it again but in a different role. I actually took this class for my Mediacom credit but actually it turns out I didn't need this credit so I'm actually just taking this class for experience and more hands-on work with producing and things like that. My advisor is actually Prof. Wald, and I was in another class originally, but he, it, I think it like wasn't offered anymore, and so he was like, you should take special events and help me manage uh, Highbridge, and I was like, all right, let's do it. I wanted to get more involved, and so that's why I decided to take the class, just to meet more people, and I've always loved design and stuff, and so I just wanted to, you know, be able to be a part of something that was big like this, and. Uh, I've honestly just been kind of winging it as I've been going along. Uh, I pretend to know what I'm doing and it's, it's worked out pretty, pretty well so far. For students, the class was a learning curve where they experienced many real world complications, but they gained many positive experiences. I would have to say my favorite part was working together with all the different teams and collaborating to bring all our collective vision to a reality. Um, my favorite part of this class is definitely all the new things that I'm taking on, like definitely have seen people produce things, but I've never been in those shoes before, so I'm seeing how difficult it is for people who do take on those roles on a regular basis. This has given me kind of an experience on working on my own and having guidance from Todd Wald throughout, and like working with Lucas has been really fun, so I think it's been a good experience. The biggest takeaway would be uh, just the concept of teamwork and uh, working together to bring everybody's idea to life. The class is responsible for the after party and teardown even after the event is over later tonight. 
The students in Wold's class have put in countless hours to make the film festival come together this year. This live cast is a part of the special events course and is the responsibility of students and volunteers to put on. While there may be only nine students in the special events class, many more work to help put everything on, making Highbridge a true showcase of students' work all around. So it's not just in the films that we'll see later tonight. Every year, Highbridge has a different iconic theme all tied to their overarching slogan, Dream, Create, Inspire. This year, the theme reflects the Vaporwave era with the connecting of ideas of stories past and future. For those that don't know, Vaporwave is a genre of music that began to emerge in the 1980s. It is known for its mixture of electronic music and smooth sounds. It's popular for its reinterpretation of pop culture themes, which feeds into the theme of past influencing the future. You can see the influence of music roots in the bright lights and the fun designs throughout the film festival. Let's take a look at the team that proposed and designed the theme for this year. Highbridge 2023 is coming to Asbury with quite a different look than ever before. The theme for this year comes from the term vaporwave, giving it a retro vibe for the design of this year's event. Highbridge class design team members Lucas Hammond and Grace Statzer were not only in charge of designing the theme, but had the original idea of vaporwave from the very beginning. It came from Grace, really, the vaporwave theme. Uh, we wanted to do something that was a little different, that stood out from past years and just kind of, you know, something that would pop and we could really play with the color and the, the different themes and that sort of thing. We, we pretty much tag team the whole poster together. Um, there was certain elements here and there that like Professor Wold would throw in and uh, we, we mainly did the whole thing together though, like we, we split up the work and stuff like that. I knew that having like a colorful hybrid would be fun because in the past we've had a lot of more classical and like traditional looking like the Oscars it is more fancy black tie but the vaporwave it kind of adds a new sense of color and freshness and yeah and also it has a retro and futuristic feel which is very good for just all generations. The vaporwave theme was definitely a bold choice but thanks to the hard work and creativity of the design team it's brought a fun filled and jazzy style to the big event of High Bridge. For your local news updates, I'm Noah Clark. The Vaporwave theme is reflected in all the design elements for the festival and throughout our show as well, as in the graphics and the imagery. One of the best examples of light showing the theme of the night is in Hughes, where films will be shown in about 20 minutes. We actually have our live reporter, Addie Smith, live inside Hughes to give us a glimpse of the atmosphere as people began to filter in. Addie, what's it looking like in there? Thanks, Asa. Like you said, I am in Hughes Auditorium right now, which has been transformed to host tonight's films. If you look up at the ceiling, you can see the beautiful light display highlighting the vibrant colors signature to the vaporwave movement. Usually there is some kind of a display that Studio 46 assists with, and last year they featured stars in the room that was lit dark blue. This year is different from recent years because of the emphasis on the bright colors that liven up the space. It is already a hit among students and guests that are beginning to filter in. As you can see, there, there are still some empty seats, but they will be filling up really soon. Hybrid is one of Asbury's largest events, and it fills Hughes with consistency every year. Filmmakers have VIP seats up closer to the front, and for the regular guests, seats are first come, first serve, so they fill up and they line up really fast, and they're rushing to get here early. While we are still a ways out from the start of the show, things are beginning to amp up here. That's all the updates I have for you now, but later in the show, I will be back with Professor Todd Wald for a quick interview, and I'll also be featuring some of the best outfits of the night, so, don't, so you don't want to miss it. Everyone has a unique and important story to tell. Studio 46 Media will bring your vision to reality through video production, live events, or virtual hybrid meetings. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then what's a video worth? Studio 46 Media will help you create effective and strategic video content, ensuring that you're able to cultivate a message that shares your unique story with the community. Interested in sharing your message in a memorable way? The Studio 46 Media Live Events team is ready to help you with your project. Whether you're looking to impress attendees with an in-person experience, host a virtual meeting, or a hybrid of the two, we can make any option of your choosing remarkable. 
No matter what's going on in the world, Studio 46 Media will help your message reach the people who need to hear it most. To learn more, visit studio46media.com. While there is a lot that goes into Highbridge, the heart of the festival remains at its intended purpose, the student filmmakers. Every year, Highbridge is known to showcase the best and the brightest Asbury student films. With only a handful of films selected by a panel, it has become a coveted honor to have a film selected in Highbridge. This year, we had a chance to talk to filmmakers about their reactions and a bit about the films that we will see from them later tonight. Let's take a look at our filmmaker feature. And so um, when I woke up and I read that email saying, oh, your film made it in, I started crying. <laughs> I was so excited because, you know, it felt like I had hit a goal. You know, I haven't won anything yet or the documentary hasn't won anything. And, you know, I'm just already so grateful that it made it in because I know people will get to watch it the night of Highbridge, you know. It was originally a 42 minute documentary and I got it down to eight minutes and five seconds. And so the film focuses on the Auschwitz section and I'm just so excited for everyone to watch that and experience that side of humanity and what we got to see. Cause a lot of people won't get the chance to go to Poland or Germany, you know? And this is kind of like them getting to experience. It's a walk through the Holocaust. Doug and Wilt is structured uh, like the the film itself like is supposed to be reminiscent of those kinds of late night deep talks except one of the brothers is dead and uh, in that way it's supposed to be funny but also it's supposed to invite uh, viewers into this uh, deep uh, like help them ask questions about death about life about uh, what it means to be alive so some inspiration I kind of took when approaching this was sort of a scary movie vibe where it's like it's supposed to be a horror movie but not really it's a comedy and more of a um, uh, a Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed vibe. I was scared by that movie as a child but it is a comedy so. One of the most challenging things about this film was it had no dialogue so getting Nick to portray the character the way I wanted him to was a challenge, but he really helped and we made it possible by how easily he took direction. I honestly wanted to kind of help myself out by making something not too complex, if that makes sense, um, which the film is complex in that it's more of a musical, um, but it's one actor, one room. Um, we shot it in one day. I really just wanted something that was logistically a little easier to do so that I had space to be more creative with with what I had, which is the, the score and the and the performance of Ian and the cinematography and all that fun stuff. So um, Chops was almost more of um, me wanting to make a film that I knew I could have fun doing it. And that was challenging in that way. And then for Up the Road, um, the idea really just honestly came to me one day. I was like, what, wouldn't it be funny if there was a hitchhiker and he just saw this, kind of met this other thing um, it originally started as something like in a bag, like a, like a trash bag or something with something moving in it, but then I turned it into a jar. Um, and the idea was very kind of toned down and, and melancholy, but then as I started to collaborate with Gavin Reith, um, he really breathed some life into the character and made the character really three-dimensional. Somebody who was kind of um, kind of immature and kind of whiny uh, in a funny way at the beginning of the film. So um, I had the initial idea, but Gavin, collaborating with Gavin really turned it into the story that it is now. It stemmed from like an insecurity that I had of um, just the friendships that come about every once in a while um, that you revisit and just the insecurity that you have with friends of not reaching out to them or n them not reaching out to you and having to prove that you were okay during that during that time of not actually being friends, you know. Um, and so I hope that through this story, people can, I hope the story can, or the movie can remind them to reach out to people that they're thinking about and to, you know, be vulnerable. And you can show your friends who you truly are and it's also not just 
that's not going to be the solution all the time, you know. Um, once you do that, there are still steps that you need to take to constantly check up on them. So our inspiration for making this film, um, I don't know if everybody remembers where they were on December the 10th of 2021, uh, but I was home with my wife and three kids. Uh, but everybody in Kentucky was on edge because we heard tornadoes were coming. Tornadoes were uh, the worst that the state had ever seen. Um, and like I say, our banks are pretty much widespread across the state. I hope the story reminds us that we're all connected, uh, that there's um, there's always some way you can help, whether it's stopping and genuinely praying for somebody, or whether you click the QR code at the end of the thing and give a dollar. Um, we we're blessed that this film raised about $100,000 in the course of a week. I wouldn't say horror, but like goofy horror. Horror comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And we kind of came up with the idea of like a ghost first. And you always see ghosts in sheets. But what if we actually made them sheets? We took that and then kind of made the concept around yeah, this okay. revenge of the sheet that got stained. So taking that concept and kind of making it and fulfilling that and fleshing it all out is kind of where we took it from there. It's about a perspective in relationships and so it's about uh, a couple who um, Maple writes letters to Teddy before he leaves for his internship her boyfriend Teddy before he leaves for his internship and then they have to manage the expectations and the um, and their desires in that space of being apart and then um, they both surprise each other with different visits um, to see if they can mend the parts that seem to be separating as they are spent physical time separated. The film is about kind of like my tumbling and how I had a deep passion for that, but it kind of, the door got closed on that. And I think in a lot of ways, the a door for film kind of opened up and I was able to kind of like take what happened to me and then kind of put my new passion towards it. and. Uh, it was just a really cool thing. And plus to be able to document and look back and see where I was and where I am now, this is a really cool experience. Yeah, this film was a mix of personal experience and uh, just kind of a general hope that I have had for uh, my generation. And I felt like this was a message that I wanted to share with people and have other people understand what it's like to go through a mental health crisis or to kind of experience that from both sides as far as the person experiencing the mental health crisis or the person who's there to support. Um, and that's something that uh, I felt really strongly about and so I kind of wanted to be able to share that in a film. So the inspiration for this film, as you may guess, is the Bible. Um, so I was inspired by the biblical account of David uh, in 1 Samuel. And so the inspiration came when I wanted to make sort of like a adaptation of the story of David because I have always found that his story is cinematic and exciting and there's highs and lows and, and it just felt ripe for a movie. And there just aren't that many David adaptations and so uh, my idea was to tell his story in the form of Western because his story fell right within the mold of a Western. Um, whether it's the setting of like the American West or the uh, Middle East and like ancient Israel, it just felt like a natural fit setting wise, but then also sort of the. Um, the tone and the themes that I, that I pick up from reading 1 Samuel, um, it just really lent to David as a Western gunslinger. In Highbridge this year, there are 10 separate student directors from Asbury featured, and senior Danny Baraka has two of his films in the festival. In addition to these films, another large student work will be shown, with David Whitaker's film also being highlighted later in the show. However, it is not in consideration for awards like the other films. While there is a lot to look forward to tonight with the films, things are still moving in Hughes. Our live reporter, Addie, is joined by the director of Highbridge and the professor of the special events class, Todd Wald. 
Addy? Thanks, Asa. I have Professor Wald with me, who was responsible for this entire event. Professor Wald, what does it take to put on an event like this? It takes a lot of people, a lot of people that are dedicated to uh, celebrating film at Asbury for the whole community. So what has this year been different than previous years? You know, every year we come up with a new theme, and our focus this year is a little bit on the past in filmmaking and the future. And so it was a lot of fun coming up with our theme and look and feel. It's a little bit 80s, retro, but a little bit futuristic. So we had a lot of fun with it. Perfect. So what do you want people to take away from Highbridge this year? Just celebrating story, right? You know, having our students tell stories and get their vision out there and ultimately glorifying God in the process. So what has been your favorite part of this whole entire process? I really like bringing students together that haven't done this before and, and getting their ideas, you know, and, and shaping the, the theme and the vision for this year's event. It's, it's not only putting on this show here tonight in the awards, but the party afterwards and all that leads up to it. So it's, it's a lot of fun doing that. Have there been any challenges that have popped up or anything like that? There's always challenges that pop up. <laughs> I don't even want to go into it because we've cleared a few hurdles already, so we're in good shape. And what are you looking forward to most part of this night? I always like finding out who the audience award's going to be, right? So we get to see the votes, and um, you never know. You never know what the audience is going to react to. So that's the best part. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be right back here in Hughes later on to find out who came as the best dress for tonight's event. Thanks, Addy. The special events class is a part of the big changes that we will see this year, especially over there in Hughes. In addition to the Hughes live team decorating the space and coordinating the live show, they are also responsible for casting the host each year. Let's take a closer look at who the hosts of Highbridge are this year. Oh, I saw the auditions and I was like, mm, this is my time, I gotta try. <laughs> One of the highlights for the live audience every year is the coveted role of Highbridge host. This year, Ian Wong and Reagan Gibbs gained the roles after showcasing their comedic chemistry in auditions. So in the host selection process, it was very difficult because we had a bunch of like amazing people that came and auditioned, but the chemistry between Ian and Reagan was just like, it just felt right, so. I'm Ian, and I am the co-host of Highbridge Film Festival this year with Reagan Gibbs. Hi, I'm Reagan Gibbs, and I am the Highbridge co-host for this year. Both hosts have root in film or on the stage and share a love for award ceremonies like the Oscars. That prompted them to become the 2023 Highbridge host. I, I love being on stage, I love being funny, um, if you don't know, um, and I was just like, man, that would be so much fun to do. Not only would it be like a really big opportunity, but also I just think it would be a lot of fun. And I just love the environment of an awards film festival, and I was approached by Spencer and, um, just Spencer Harvey, but eventually Alexis, um, to interview for it, or to audition for the position of co-host, and I just thought, why not? After weeks of planning and preparing, the pair has a vision for the kind of show they want to have and how it connects to their roots. I want it to be universal and not just hybrid or like Asbury jokes, and so I hope that we can give that impression. Definitely don't want to like try to make it anything that's not Asbury, it's not Ian and I. Like, I want our influence in it, but I also like, I grew up watching award shows and stuff, and like, I just recently watched the Oscars, and so I want to make sure we have a hint of professionalism, but also still keep it very Asbury, you know? The new hosts have high hopes for how they want the night to turn out. I also want them to feel like, oh man, this is like our version of the Oscars, like we're actually cool and stuff. I hope that I'm funny, um, I hope that people laugh at my jokes. Ian and Reagan will take the stage shortly after 7 tonight. Those two certainly have the energy to be great hosts for the night. Last year, the audience loved Carmen Clemente and Aiden Humphrey as the host, and this year, Ian was hoping to draw on what they did, but add in more improv when it comes to discussing the films that we'll be seeing. And he will actually have one of his own in there called House Ivy. I'm excited to see what they do tonight, and we may just see Ian back here for the audience award. With Hybrids beginning in less than five minutes, we have so much more to bring you, so stay tuned.
With the show just a few minutes away, there was a lot of building anticipation about the films we're about to see. Filmmakers have worked for months on some of their passion project films, and tonight they may just get the payoff of one of those many prestigious awards the judges are handing out tonight. However, one award that is still undecided is the Audience Award. That is up to the students and you, the viewers, tonight. Once all the movies have been played, there will be a short voting period where you can text in your vote for your favorite film of the night. It'll be simple, but make sure to have your phones ready to go. While the other awards are being announced, the votes will be tallied up to conclude the night with the coveted audience favorite award. And we will have a chance to sit down with that lucky director in our post show. After the voting ends and the awards are announced, the part of the film festival will have concluded, but Highbridge is not over then. After the events and hues are done, guests can make their way to the Miller Communications building, which will have been decorated for the after party. Students will make their way past our studio, where we will be recording the post show to the lower level of Miller. There they will find a transformed TV studio that will host an L8 truck and food from Chick-fil-A, Insomnia Cookies, and more. Outside we'll have a tent with a DJ and room to dance for the true after party feel. There will be lots of lights and fun colors linking back to the vaporwave theme and the rest of the event. For many students, this is the party of the year, so a big turnout is definitely expected for tonight. With the after party acting as somewhat of a dance for many students, it is no surprise to see many guests all dressed up for the event. Highbridge is known to be somewhat of a red carpet of Asbury events with people going all out for the festival. Addie Smith is still live in Hughes right now to bring us a look at some of those guests that got all dolled up for the night. Addie. Thanks, Asa. I am joined right now by Faith Osborne and Charlie Cox, who, as you can see, went all out for Highbridge tonight. So, Faith, who are you wearing tonight? I'm wearing Macy's, but technically my sister's closet. And who are you wearing? Um, I'm wearing Walmart, my fedora. Right, perfect. Are you guys so excited for tonight? Absolutely. There's nothing better than uh, watching my friends film and the work that they've worked so hard on this semester. Are you excited? Oh yeah, I love seeing all the films that Asbury students made and I'm just excited to be here. Perfect, so what are you most excited for for tonight? I'm most excited to see my boyfriend's film, Kevin Combs. He's worked really hard on it, so I'm excited to see it on the big screen. Perfect, and what are you most excited for? Um, honestly, I feel like I can't say. I've seen a couple of trailers, but I'm, I'm just excited to see all of them. So yeah, there's always, there's always some hidden gems, so. Perfect. So, are you guys excited for the after party? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's one of the best parts to get to take some fun pictures and the food's great and uh, I think there's music, so that's always fun. All right, perfect. Thank you guys. I have dreamed of being a second grade teacher since I was seven years old. Uh, I wanted to go back to school to get my degree in education, but it's not something that everybody can pay for out of pocket. Then I started working at Chick-fil-A and got to really get to know Amy and found out that she was once a teacher. I wrote a recommendation, but it was super easy because she brings it. Thanks to Chick-fil-A and thanks to my operator, I received a $25,000 True Inspiration Scholarship. It truly changed my life. From teacher to teacher. Aww. <laughs> uh, 20 seconds. Go down. Start there. Before we turn it over to our Hughes team, we wanted to give you a rundown of the night. After we hear from the hosts and speakers, we will watch some great films. After those films, we will have a quick 10-minute intermission until we're back to watch, well, you guessed it, more films. After all that is done, we will have the time for voting. Then some other films before awards. And after it's all done, we'll be right back here for a post show with exclusive analysis and awards. Well, I don't know about you, Rachel, but I'm ready to go. And it is now finally time for the thing that you've been all waiting for, and that is the start of the 2023 Highbridge Film Festival.
I have dreamed of being a second grade teacher since I was seven years old. Uh, I wanted to go back to school to get my degree in education, but it's not something that everybody can pay for out of pocket. Then I started working at Chick-fil-A and got to really get to know Amy and found out that she was once a teacher. I wrote a recommendation, but it was super easy because she brings it. Thanks to Chick-fil-A and thanks to my operator, I received a $25,000 True Inspiration Scholarship. It truly changed my life. From teacher to teacher. Everyone has a unique and important story to tell. Studio 46 Media will bring your vision to reality through video production, live events, or virtual hybrid meetings. If a picture is worth a thousand words, then what's a video worth? Studio 46 Media will help you create effective and strategic video content, ensuring that you're able to cultivate a message that shares your unique story with the community. Interested in sharing your message in a memorable way? The Studio 46 Media Live Events team is ready to help you with your project. Whether you're looking to impress attendees with an in-person experience, host a virtual meeting, or a hybrid of the two, we can make any option of your choosing remarkable. No matter what's going on in the world, Studio 46 Media will help your message reach the people who need to hear it most. To learn more, visit studio46media.com. Welcome to Highbridge Film Festival. Let's give a round of applause to uh, Glenn Flanagan and the Asbury Jazz Band. <laughs> always a delight, always a delight. Um, as we get underway, I want to be sure to thank uh, Dave Groves and Wes Kawaja and the Communication Arts Production Team, as well as ITS for their support and effort toward this event. And especially our key sponsors, the Jaffe Family, Studio 46, and others that help make this happen. Um, you know, if I were to drive up to the curb tonight driving a DeLorean, a stainless steel DeLorean, I know exactly what picture that would come to mind for most of you, right? <laughs> Back to the future, right? Yeah, and that iconic car, that remarkable story is really in our minds, right, once we see that film. And I know the first time that I met uh, Dr. Kevin Brown, another Doc Brown popped into my head, right? I keep waiting for him to say, roads, where Asbury's going, we don't need roads. You know, maybe at the next town hall or something. And that's what film does, right? The story images from the past stay with us and shape the movies and the things that we see after. And they fuel the imagination of filmmakers as well. We've got a great set of new films for you to see tonight, and you may notice subtle nods to the past throughout the evening. So I want you to sit back and enjoy tonight's films. So to open our time, um, I'd like to have Doc Brown, I mean, President Kevin Brown, come up to the podium and open us in prayer. Imagining myself with Doc Brown's hair right now. Uh, I don't know if they would have hired me. <laughs> Can we pray together? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather, especially during this time in the semester, the busyness we are experiencing right now. Lord, to pause and to take stock of the creativity that our students have produced. And Lord, what a picture that is of all of the investment deliberate men and women have put into their lives. So we just thank you for this place. We thank you for this time. We thank you for Asbury. We thank you for the faculty and staff who wake up committed to our students. We thank you for their care. We thank you, Lord, for their investment in their intellect and their investment in their spiritual lives. 
And Lord, I'm so thankful for these students. Father, in a time when there seems to be so much despair, I pray that when the world sees this generation, sees these people right here in this room, I pray that they would see hope. And Lord, I pray that all of these stories that we tell and tell creatively would be the telling of but one story, and that is your story. May it ultimately honor and glorify you. Please be here in this space. We love you. We thank you. In Christ's name, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jim Owens. Good evening. It is my honor to introduce to you this year's Highbridge Judges. And not only did the judges review the films you'll be seeing, uh, but they presented yesterday at least two workshops to our students, and uh, so we're indebted to you for your contribution to our students. Let me introduce our first judge, Corey Edwards. Corey's worked as a director, writer, actor, and comic. While his feature film debut was actually hoodwinked, He'd already had a long career that involved almost every creative area of the business for over 25 years. He served as a writer, director, producer, actor, animator, art director, and editor, all at the same time. That's a joke. <laughs> He's written for Veggie Tales, Ninja Turtles, Fraggles, Woody the Woodpecker, and his recent film, Fear Fearless, debuted as a number five film in the world on Netflix. Corey, could you stand for us? Our second judge is Andrea Nasfell. Andrea is a screenwriter of theatrical, faith-based comedies, including The Resurrection of Gavin Stone and Mum's Night Out, which won a Dove Award for Inspirational Film of the Year. She's also written a number of television movies, and her film What If was selected by Movie Guide as one of 2010's test 10 best films for family audiences. Andrea teaches screenwriting at USC School of Cinematic Arts and Asbury's graduate program. However, most importantly, she is a graduate of Asbury University. Andrea? Our third judge is Brady Nasfell, and, and I thought a lot about how to introduce him, and probably the best way is to say he's Andrea's husband. However, he is also a film and television producer. He's produced feature films and television for Netflix, Sony, Lionsgate, Fox Sports, NBC, VH1, Discovery Networks, and other independent distributors. Brady has produced feature films such as Fourth of July and Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters. He's done comedy specials, documentaries, and sports productions. He's a member of the producer's Guild of America and the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. I also want to mention that this past year, Brady won a Grammy Award for the soundtrack on one of his productions. He also teaches here at Asbury in our grad program. Brady? Our last judge is John DeCure. John is a production design artist who has worked on many iconic films such as Ghostbusters, Top Gun, Cleopatra, Hello Dolly, Jim Henson's 3D Muppet movie, and plenty of more. For years, John was also a Disney Imagineer, primary, primarily overseeing much of the production, the design of Epcot at Disney. John has taught at the, USCLA, the UCLA Performing Arts Program, USC School of Cinema, and the American Film Institute. He also teaches production design here at Asbury. Besides teaching at Asbury, John and his family have made a significant contribution uh, of one of the largest film art collections in the world, primarily focused on he and his father's work. John also gave us today one of his father's Oscar awards. Earlier today, President Brown named the art collection the John DeCure Production Design St Studies Center in the Miller Building. I'd also like to recognize, well, let me have John first. John, could you stand?
we're also delighted for John to have some members of his family here. David, or John David DeCure is here, and uh, we're glad you could make it. I also want to recognize John's wife, Kay Bell. Since we have such a large equine program here at Asbury, I thought you'd like to know that Kay was the first female jockey to ever win a race at Keeneland Racetrack, and she won two races at Churchill Downs on Derby Day. So we're delighted to have you here. Kay, could you stand for us? Thank you. Hosting the Highbridge Film Festival. Do you know how to host? I guess you just have to keep the audience entertained, right? Um, no, that's never gonna catch on. We need a serious idea, and we don't have a lot of time. Okay, that's weird. What do you think happens if we don't get to use on time? You will die a most painful death. Well, if that's gonna happen, we should probably know each other's names. I'm Reagan. Ian. I think this is the start of a beautiful friendship. We're still looking at you, kid. We've been through silent film, and sound, and now color. According to the letter, we must be going in the right direction. So, since we're going to be spending some time together, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? You're very handy, I can tell. I bet you also like to read a lot, too. I like to read a lot myself. Some people think I'm too much of an intellectual, but I think it's a fabulous way to spend your spare time. I also play racquetball. Do you have any hobbies? Reagan, that's the guy that gave us the letters. We need to get to Hughes before him. Hi, I'm Ian. Oh, you like books? I love books. I'm a big fan of books. Oh, gotta go. Reagan. What? Oh! 
Oh, man. Oh, oh, I thought it was just going to be That's like my Nana out people. here. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Why are that? I haven't seen this many people in here since, like, the outpouring. Oh. <laughs> Wait. You don't think this is the revival, do you? Uh, sorry, guys. That ended, like, a couple months ago. Oops. That was a few months ago. <laughs> yeah. And we're really sorry if your chairs just fall apart halfway through a movie, because they've been through a lot. Yeah, I mean, but so have we, so. Welcome, Welcome to, to Hyper Film Festival! Woo! Again. And I'm Ian. And we will be your co hosts We for are the co hosting. We're hosting together. Yeah, we are hosting. Yay. Yep. So, uh, we have a lovely lineup of judges tonight. First and foremost, we have the Mr. Hoodwinked himself, Corey Edwards, here in the house. <laughs> Thank you for the animation that gave me nightmares as a mm. kid. Thank you so much. Writing did kind of slip. Writing was really good. Writing slid. was underrated. We've also got the Nasfells here. We do have the Nasfells. Um, Andrea Nasfell is known for writing Mom's Night Out, Resurrection of Gavin Stone, and some Hallmark Christmas movies. And Brady has produced a bunch of cool things, including Joe Rogan specials and some UFC fights as well. And they've asked us tonight to announce their latest collaboration. Seasons Beatings, starring Joe Rogan. As Santa Claus, he fights his way to his family and learns the value of honesty and gratitude along the way. It's pretty beautiful. I'm really excited for it. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And last but not least, we have John DeCure Jr., who's the legend. Um, he's known for making New York City big and scary in Ghostbusters. Listen, okay, this man is kind of a legend. He did help, you know, create the Epcot ball, Epcot which ball. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of a big fan of. Yeah, very sparkly fit. <laughs> Little very promotion sparkly. for the dress. Can I get an amen? Stop. You know, he's also known for uh, production designing Top Gun. Oh, what? Top, top Gun? What's on top of the Tom gun? Cruise, I, don't get I, it. I feel the need. What? The need mm. for speed. I feel oh, the need for speed. cars! Kachow! No. I love that movie! <laughs> Reagan, that's. Uh -huh. No, it's Top Gun. We were just talking I about don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think you know movies very well. Um, excuse me. If I didn't know movies, why am I helping host Kybridge? I dare you to name one movie quote right <gasps> now. How dare you? I am. Um, okay. Um, walk briskly, Forrest, walk briskly. Yeah? I think that's Run, Forrest, Run. What? From Forrest Gump. Run, no, Forrest, right. Run. No. It's spoken by Hannah Hall. I think I'm right. Who played the young Jenny in Forrest Gump. Okay, whatever. Run okay. Win I'm going to hit you with another Oscars. one. Okay, and this one's going to be right. Um, I'm the monarch of the globe. Mon mon king. I'm, I'm the king of the world? Reagan, that's Leonardo DiCaprio from Titanic. Isn't that the guy who painted the Mona Lisa? <laughs> <coughs> As I was saying, Leonardo DiCaprio from Titanic. Whatever, whatever. It literally doesn't matter. Okay, Oscars I am about to hit you with the most iconic quote. Superhero quote, everybody knows superheroes. Yeah, okay. One chance. With substantial ability comes sizable authority. <laughs> you know, not, yeah? not even yeah? close, honestly. I think I was right. I not think I was close. right. Was I right? <laughs> yeah? Yeah! Well, these Asbury filmmakers did show their substantial ability with these films, so... Sit back. Relax. Silence your cell phones. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs in your seats at all times. And enjoy the enjoy show! Enjoy the show! My phone was just blowing up. The storm was so huge. I mean, it was wide, and uh, it had been already on the ground for so many miles. It was just, uh, uh, you know, it was nationwide news. I was in the basement with my family, my pets, and all I heard was it sounded like a train going past. 75% of our town was gone. I might forget the night itself. I'll never forget the feeling. It's the morning after that I'm never gonna forget. So I, the morning after I went to a toy drive, when you go out to the car for the toy drive, you have to ask my ID. 
And so I asked this lady for her ID and uh, she said, I don't have it. She goes, it blew away with the storm last night along with everything else I had. I got home from work, storms were coming. Uh, wife's like, hey, we need to go down to my mom and dad's basement. Heard the storm roll over. You seen a lot of people that you didn't think you would ever see again that night and you felt grateful, but at the same time, you knew you'd lost friends and family. On December the 10th, we I, I was at home that, that evening, but I saw where it was going and the path that it was taking. And the scary part is, is then when it happens, you know, your cell phone service goes away. And I mean, at that point in time, if you're not there, all you can do is pray. That's it, that, that's, that's all you can do to try to help at that moment. It would be a it would be a sad world. Uh, kids learn how to be coached. Uh, they learn how to accept defeat, how to win graciously. They they learn the determination it takes to accomplish goals, the hard work it takes to get to a different level of competing. And they don't realize it at first, but they do eventually. That that's basically what it takes to succeed in life: is hard work and determination. Any, anybody can be a star at any given time on the field. It, all it takes is one hit, one catch. They're, they're riding a high that they'll have for the rest of their life. I was new here. I came in like fourth, fifth grade. And I didn't know anybody. I made friends and they were the ones that told me to play sports because that's like the best thing you could do is play sports with a team that will become your family. I mean, pitcher's mounds right there, uh, home plates right there. Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, there's nothing left. And it's, uh, it's sad because, you know, your little league teams, your uh, girls' little league softball teams, they, they've got nowhere to practice. You know, and, and part of, that's part of growing up, you know, bonding with other people, learning teamwork, learning leadership uh, through sports. And this community's had to suffer and, and not, not have that. Uh, this is right in the center of town. This is the heart of town. Everybody can walk here from anywhere in town that they want to. Kids in this town relied on th their home fields being right here in the middle of town so they can make it and, and get to have fun for the summer. Well, after a disaster like this, it's it takes time to rebuild. As, as you get further in the process, the, the monetary donations normally dwindle off as time goes by. We don't charge people that can't afford it. They still get to play. We give them equipment. We pay their way through the signups and everything. We make sure they make it to games with rides. All that money will go to the stuff like that. All that money will go into these fields and there's 300 kids that depend on that. This is the, maybe their only ex chance at a fun experience for the summer is playing baseball with their friends. So I, I would like for people to, to bid on this horse and make donations. Uh, the kids and the school system put a lot of hard work and painting on the horse. And I think it, it would, it, their pride of what they put into it and, and to rebuild things like this in the communities that were devastated. I do believe with the way the community has united together after this tornado, and we all want to see them be able to rebuild that back to what it was or even better than before. My biggest fear was that this town would would die because of it. I think, uh, you know, with youth league sports, people have a reason to stay in an in a area. And if that goes away, then people go away. And if people go away, the town dies. And I think that was my biggest fear, still is. I can't wait until the, the first pitch of the first game down here. Uh, I see brand new fresh infields. I, I see the grass mode. I see the lights already on. I see kids playing and just everybody at a different sense of relief knowing that we're back home where we belong.
You must be Doug. I'm so sorry for your loss. The visitation will be starting in about 30 minutes, so I'll be around. If there's anything you need, please let me know. Sure. Looking good, Wilt. Be honest, I don't think I've ever seen you look better. You never did like flowers much. Oh, I brought you something.
to life. There were so many things I wanted to tell you before you died. Like what? Hey! Show some respect! Calm down. I wanted to hear what you had to say. What if somebody walks in here? I don't know. I'll, I'll play dead or something. <sighs> Doug? <sighs> what do we do when we're scared? I, I'm not supposed to be talking what to you. What do you do when you're scared? Lie down. Lie down and talk it through. Things are always better when you talk it through. All right. Lay down and let's talk. Good. Well. Yeah, Doug. Are you really dead? I think so. What's it? What's it like? It's all right, I guess. Did you meet God? N not yet, but we made an appointment. How much did you spend on this dang casket anyway? Careful, it's a rental. Oh, I'm sorry. I... Am I wearing a suit? Sorry about that. Doug, why did you let them put me in a suit? I wouldn't have, but... Doug, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to be completely honest with me. All right. Am I wearing makeup? <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Doug, you can't let my ex-wife see me like this. She's planning to come. And my kids, Doug. You can't let my boys see their father in a suit. Well, what am I supposed to do? I, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, tear my sleeves off and, and show off my tattoos or, or something. Uh, Tell him I'm not their father. Tell him I'm one of them doppelgangers. Doug? Yeah? How did it happen? I don't know, Wilt. I've always wondered how to get such nice clothes on corpses. I'm not talking about the suit, Doug. How'd I die? Oh. Uh, you were trampled by mooses. I think you mean meese. I think it's mooses. Oh. Mom always said we needed to take care of each other. Always feels like you're the one taking care of me. I don't feel like I've done that much for you. How am I gonna make it? You know, I was scared out of my wits when Dad died. You were? Of course I was. Dad did everything for us. We were broke. I never knew him that well. He was a good man. The grief never really leaves you. You get up in the morning and you do the first thing your hands find fit to do. And then you do it again the next day. And the next the weeks and months and the years pass. You find out you're stronger than you thought. But you don't do it for yourself. You do it for those you lost and for those you love. Take care of my kids, Doug. Will you? I will. And don't let my ex-wife spoil him too much. Give him too much candy. Teach him to be men. I will. I'm proud of you, Doug. You're a good kid. If you ever want to
come by and visit. Just oh, about that. What? We're gonna cremate you. You what? We're dumping your ashes in the National Moose Reservation. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> you yeah Dear Teddy, happy five months. It's only been six days since summer began, and I miss you already, more and more every day. I miss you telling me to close your eyes for you. I miss the way you could always tell I needed a hug. And when I didn't. But mostly, I miss feeling your eyes on me when I'm not looking. And vice versa. Even though we both know it, can't wait to experience all that again in 60 days. Yours, Maple. That's my ride. Okay, uh, double check your stuff. Socks, check, computer, check, wallet, check, keys, check, uh, check, computer, check allergy public pills? mother. What'd you call me? I've got everything, Maple. Take these. You'll know when to read them. Got to go. Dear Teddy, happy six months. I have an irrational fear that being around books will have sucked all the fun out of you. Please don't let me collect dust like the dictionaries. I miss you already, writing this before him. So he returned the book and half of it was gone. There are these bite marks on the edges. Guess what book title it was? I have no idea. It was How to Train a Dog. You know, I used to be okay with this. With what? This, not talking, shared, communal silence. And now it just seems like awkward? there's- Awkward? You I mean forget it. awkward? No, no, nothing. Well, I'm sorry. What, no, it's not you. Why are you apologizing? So if it's not your fault- Of course it's it not my fault. My fault? It's not yours either. It's nobody's fault. It's. Our fault, it's, I don't, I don't know. Just forget it. Happy six months. Hey. Safe trip. Thanks. I miss you already, writing this beforehand. I often fear that I won't be able to express my love to you from far away. But spending every day with you before you leave has affirmed my confidence that our love is strong. 
So hang in there, Teddy. And see you in 28-ish days. Yours, Maple. Mr. Theodore Bell. On behalf of the Petersburg National Library, it is our pleasure to inform you that we would like to extend an offer for your continual service at our Atlanta branch, starting tomorrow. Sincerely, Walter Noland. Surprise! Hey. hey, what are you doing here? Me? Yes, but I miss you. And but I just want to, you know, sit and contemplate. Because there's just... Life moves on really quickly and you gotta... Make certain decisions, you know? Yeah. Hey, I, I have some news. <laughs> I wrote you another letter. Thanks, people. Not now. You'll know when to read it. How was your last day? Y you know, it was good. It was lots of goodbyes and see you later. You know. I hate it when people say that, you know, see you later, you're not going to see them later. You might as well just make it a clean goodbye, you know? Well... What? I have a, I have a letter. You can just read it. You said no, right? If you aren't saying no to this, you're saying no to us. Whoa, Maple, that, that's a bit extreme. Well, did you? What did you expect? You knew this internship was going to lead to something bigger. I expected bigger. you to come back to school. To me. I, I haven't even said yes yet. Well, are you? I love you. But I have been waiting to move forward with you. I've been standing still so long. You're moving so fast. Maple, I'm here now. No, Teddy. You're so far. You feel so far out of reach. Are you pulling me back or helping me forward? Dear Teddy, it's super weird to be writing three months into the future. I don't know what's happened by then. Maybe all the actors have been replaced by CGI characters. Maybe scientists have found the cure to cancer. Maybe robots have taken over. Who knows? There is one thing I do know. I love you, Teddy. I love your smile. I love it when you tell me to close your eyes for you. I love your beat-up converses, and the way you tell me the story behind each scratch. I love seeing your face light up talking about your quirky passions. I love catching up on shows with you, and watching you pretend you didn't fall asleep. I love the way you can always tell I need a hug, and when I don't. I love feeling your eyes on me when I'm not looking. And vice versa. See you very, very soon, Crocodile. Hey, sis. I'll be waiting. It's okay. Yours, Maple.
someone didn't move the mat in and I missed just kidding. Uh, yes. I would say, um, you mean they didn't move it to the side where it wasn't supposed to be? Uh, I, I, was little, I think mat should be a little bit bigger. Oh, okay, okay. I refuse yeah. to take responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> so, James was, James was doing a, du uh, a double side uh, uh, over. No doubles. Don't do doubles. Alice. Unless you know how to be on target. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, please show this video to future James if he ever tried to do a double side and ask him, is it worth it? All right. Duly noted. I had no experience with tumbling until I went to college. There was a activities fair that all the freshmen had to go to. So I went ahead and went there and then I just saw this large posse of six-year-olds jumping on a trampoline. So I went to the person in charge and I said, hey man, can I do that or is that just for kids? He said, no man, those are for, we're looking for college students, so go ahead, give it a go. Ate it, but they saw how fearless I was, so they're like, yeah, go ahead, join the team. His first year on tumbling was kind of like a deer in the headlights, is how I would describe it. He was really, really afraid of hurting other people. Um, when we did group stunts, but then he kind of started getting into like, he found the trampoline and the floor and I mean, I have never seen someone go from no experience to the highest level of experience that I think that team's ever seen in such a quick span of time. Tumbling was something I was just really good at and uh, it was just kind of like therapy for me. It was just this really beautiful thing. On March 16, 2021, uh, we were doing a tumbling show and I ended up going for a trick that I usually do. Uh, we were doing a section called fire, uh, which is a ring of fire. So I did a double side flip over that said ring of fire and I landed on the mat wrong and I heard the most awful pop. So I remember the day of the injury, the next day, everybody was kind of like, you're probably fine. We were like, yeah, you probably sprained something. We'll go get it checked out and see what happened. And so it was kind of that, the next couple of days I feel like were pretty normal. The first couple days after being injured are really, really tough. I remembered I would just wake up and for about four or five seconds, I'd kind of forget about the situation that I was and then I would look down and I would see my swelled up leg. I couldn't allow myself to think that I was ACL. And I was thinking about the recovery time, like I couldn't, I said to myself that I wasn't strong enough to do rehab for six or eight months. You know, tumbling was everything to me and I couldn't be out for that long. Um, and then it turned out I tore my ACL, MCL, and my meniscus. And this was tough because I've always gotten back up. I never been knocked down so hard in my life. So I was just kind of like accepting that I needed the surgery and that um, everything was gonna be fine it was really scary. When you're here at the clinic and you have an evaluation, you can see the patient down the hallway. So I see this Fabio hair uh, that, that he's got, these flowing locks that he, he no longer uh, graces us with. But uh, I could tell he, he, he must be uh, like an athlete of some sort. He, he looked like he took good care of himself. This guy's a, a go-getter. He's already fit, so our rehab process might go a little bit easier. Rehab was not going well whatsoever. For some reason, I could not bend my leg more than 108 degrees, and I don't know what was wrong. Uh, my PT people were really cranking on me. I even got a brace that was supposed to solve it, but my leg wouldn't bend so much that the brace would just dig into my shins. And of course, that didn't stop me. I was gonna get better. I thought for some reason I wasn't doing enough, and that's why I wasn't getting better. I thought I needed to push more and that the problem wasn't my leg, but it was me. And I didn't understand how many, how, why, how so many people recovered before from ACL recovery. Because you know, I watched every like documentary about ACL recovery and I thought I was gonna kill it. It got uh, stiff on them and uh, I think, you know, it's a it's a painful surgery and a hard one to, to kind of come over and a lot of people really struggle with it. So I think his pain levels were uh, pretty high as well and that was preventing some of the, like the initial uh, range of motion based activity. To add on to an already somewhat complex case, uh, James had to uh, go back to his hometown after uh, being uh, away from Asbury for a semester. So when he came back to see me, uh, his knee would not fully straighten whenever he was uh, attempting to walk. He's like in about 10 degrees, which is a lot for extension. That's gonna 
drastically change how you're walking and your gait pattern. But he was so far out from his surgery. In my head, I was like, oh crap, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get this extension all the way back. I visited my doctor and he said, hey man, let's get some x-rays. I said, why do we need x-rays? This is ligament stuff. And he's like, go ahead, just get the x-rays. We get the x-rays and then uh, he sits me down. He doesn't look at me. You know, he has to watch what he has to say. And he tells me uh, that the surgery was done wrong. And I was never going to fully bend my leg or straighten my leg if I didn't redo the entire ACL recovery. It sucks when you find out you have to do it once. I mean, that's bad enough. Um, and then to find out that you get, I don't remember how long it was, but at least halfway into the recovery and they say, hey, by the way, you're starting over. Like, I mean, that's, that's tough. It's really frustrating knowing that, like, I made it so far into the first recovery. And then not only was I going to have to do it once, but again, with the first surgery, they were going to actually remove my ACL, do a bone graft, get my leg to heal and then hopefully that'll give me more of a fresh start for that second surgery. So uh, I went through the kind of first part of ACL recovery three times. I don't know if I'll ever get a full recovery. Uh, my doctor feels like I'll get one that's pretty close. But I think if I'm going to do it, I have to be almost a madman. Like, I have to be almost crazy about my PT and my recovery. And I, I hope I can do that. But if I don't get a full recovery, I think I'll be fine. You know, after doing this for almost two years. You know, acceptance kicks in. And But hey, maybe. You know, if I, if I do, that's awesome. Uh, I'll make sure to... Uh, send a couple backflip videos. No more rings of fire, but like, yeah, you know, if I could get back into flips, I think that would be really encouraging. It can be like a slight hobby for me, uh, but I, don't, I would definitely never be at the skill level I was uh, or take it as seriously as I did. But I'm so grateful for the time I did have the tumble. It was seriously a huge gift to me. And I will always remember it. And I will always tell people and show videos of it, you know, uh, but man, it was a it was a treat, you know, that's for sure. It kinda taught me like any big goal that seems impossible or really tough, all you gotta do is just little stuff every day. Just consistency is key. And I can apply that to any aspect in my life. And that was one nice thing that PT taught me. Sweet. I'm done. Hey, what's up? Hey, I have a question for you. What is it? What gets you up in the morning? Uh, what? Like, what keeps you going every day? Bro, it's 9 a.m. I don't know, my alarm? I'm serious. What gets me up in the morning is... Bacon. Why can't you just give me a real answer? Whoa, Jay, what's wrong? What's wrong? We go through our whole meaningless lives doing meaningless crap over and over and over again. We wake up, we go to work, we do the same thing every single day just to come home exhausted and hoping to find a better reason to get up in the morning. So give me one single good reason to keep going. Jay, I'm sorry. I... Is everything okay? Have you talked to Kate about this? Kate died last night. 
drunk driver. Blue or red. She died before they even made it to the hospital. I don't know how to go on without her. So can you give me a reason? Jay. Okay, thanks for trying, Nick. Jay! Come on, Jay. Pick up! Pick up! Hey. You found a good reason yet? I was gonna do it. Jay, I'm so sorry. I know how much you love Kate. Can I ask you something? Who would be able to share your memories of each other if you were gone? And besides, if you were gone, who else would I have to beat in Rocket League? <laughs> Come on, Jay. Let's get back to the car. Thank you. In time.
Not a bad shot for a kid. Who are you? Do you know who this was? Hey, now, I don't want any trouble. He attacked our farm, tried to kill my family. I'm sure he did. That's why I've been trailing him. Pretty big bounty on this behemoth. Bounty? Wait. You're the king. The gunslinger. It's just king. And yes, the gunslinger. What's it like? The life on the road, the chasing bounties. Sleeping under the stars, seeing the country, plenty of money. Is that what you want to hear? Well, isn't it? It's not a job for a runt kid, we'll say that. Took you two hands just to lift a pistol. I take down wild animals in the field every day. And animals like him are no different. Yeah, lucky shot. You have a lot more to learn. So, would you teach me? I don't have time for that. Way I see it. I just did your job for you. I'll give you the whole share of the bounty on this Philistine, if you let me join you. So, partners? Apprentice. Sleeve. Like a thief in the night. Is that what it's gonna take? Friends killing friends? <laughs> Friend. <clears throat> You're just a runt I felt sorry for. You saw yourself in me. You're nothing like me. You'd like to believe that too. You just had to be a gunslinger. Begged me to teach you. And I have learned enough. And now you are going to stop hunting me. What are you waiting for? Kill me like you killed my son. I didn't kill Johnny and you know- You don't get to say his name! He was my brother! And you were never a father to him. Kill me then. Shoot an unarmed man. I'm not gonna do that. Because you're so much better than me, right? That's not what this is about. Hasn't it always been? <sighs> better than me? Better than my son? You never understood us. You have a code, so you're blameless? you are. Draw. I'm not gonna kill you, King. Coward, draw! Admit it. Admit that you killed my son. Johnny came to warn me about the men you sent to kill me. They killed him, King. You killed Johnny.
never understood how you could sleep through those nightmares. Our feud is over. I never wanted to kill you. And now you're gonna stop hunting me. God can judge you for what I've done. I have no interest in sending you to him. David! Those films. They're pretty good, right? I right? Love those yeah. Films, yeah. Hey, Ian, you were pretty good in Yours Maple. Oh, you think so? Yeah, yeah, your acting was pretty Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank that you. breakup must have been pretty bad, though. I mean, it pushed you into a career in jazz, so. That's true. Sorry, music majors, we promise we love you. We promise. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna lie, after watching Doug and Welt, I got pretty sleepy. I want a nap now. That coffin, that coffin looked was pretty comfy. Very comfortable. I would take a nap in that. Yeah. Well, now's your time to maybe take a little nap on your neighbor's shoulder or to, unless it's your professor, then maybe just ask for an extension. Um, <laughs> you know what? I think it's time for intermission. Intermission! Let's go.
Oh, man. All right, you know, everybody, settle down, settle down. All right, take a seat, y'all. You know, I'll be honest. I did not think we'd make it this far. Uh -uh. I thought we'd be fired before intermission. But I mean, did you hear that letter? Terminated? What does terminated mean? I'm like kind of scared, not gonna lie. Well, we don't really know what to do. What are we good at? Do you guys want to play improv? <gasps> do some improv? Um, all right, so can y'all shout out two classic movie characters for us? Okay, I'm hearing some Star Wars characters. I'm hearing Star Wars. Man, I'm hearing everything. I heard Lightning McQueen. I heard Lightning McQueen. Lightning McQueen, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lightning McQueen, I'll, Toe Mater. I'll be Toe Mater. You'll be Toe Mater. Okay, you, you're a professor and okay. I'm a student and I, I want to change my major. Okay. okay. <laughs> and scene. Hey there, Professor <laughs> Lightning McQueen. Uh, oh, Katow, come in my office, yeah, you know, Mr. Toe Mater. Uh, I'm just not feeling that passionate about uh, riding horses no more. I don't want to be an equine major anymore. Well, that makes sense. You Your know, giant car body can't fit on a horse. Exactly, and uh, horses can't go backwards, and that's what I'm known for, is going backwards. <laughs> wow. That and seems see. like a pretty... <laughs> Let's do one more. Let's do one more. That was I feel cursed. like we're on a roll. That was okay, amazing. Okay, okay. Um, more iconic characters from movies. Just keep yelling. You want to do Spider-Man? Spider-Man? We can do Spider-Man. Shrek! 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 What okay. am I? Um, can I be Puss in Boots? You want to be Puss in Boots? I want to be Puss in Boots. Okay, Shrek. I'm Shrek. All right, can um, I be the professor this time? Yeah, and I'm here to ask for an extension. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Knock, knock, knock. I'm Puss in Boots. Come in. <laughs> Somebody once told me the world was... Oh, it's uh, me. <laughs> Mario. It's me, Mario. Uh, it's, it's me. You thought I was a Shrek because uh, I came in with the All-Star. Uh, see, I'm Puss in Boots. You're a Puss in Boots? I'm Puss in Boots and you want I'm extension? I would like an extension on my paper. Uh, I got to make a, the pizza for Peach. And scene! All right. I, I think I think we're ready for the next batch of films. Yeah, they're way hopefully better than our improv. Hopefully, it's I better than our improv. All, right. All right, let's watch this next Let's batch roll. of films. <laughs> the sign reads: "Our bite, mock fry." or work will set you free. It was a lie. In this concentration camp during the Holocaust, more than a million people died. Jews mostly, but also Poles, Gypsies, Russian prisoners of war. They were gassed, worked to death, starved, shot. It's my first time traveling outside the US. I'd never even been on a plane before, but here I am trying to make sense of this, all of this. I had read about the Holocaust, seen movies. We watched Schindler's List before we got here. But it's not the same. Words on pages and two-dimensional images can't prepare you. Nothing can. talking this morning. Maybe because we aren't sure what we're going to see or how we're going to react. Or maybe we do know. On the way, we see signs for Oswegium. It's a Polish name. You might know it better by the name the Germans gave it. Auschwitz. Und 
There are two camps at Auschwitz. Auschwitz I, the first and primarily a labor camp, and Auschwitz-Birkenau, an extermination center and the linchpin in the Nazis' so-called final solution. Much of Auschwitz I is still intact. The barracks and the building where the Nazis held their kangaroo court with space for a firing squad just outside. There were no fair trials here only a bullet to the back of the head. Auschwitz I had its own gas chamber with an adjacent crematorium. And then, the moment for which I was not prepared. Things taken from prisoners, preserved for us to see. A massive tangle of eyeglass taken from victims before they were gassed. Kitchenware. Prisoners thought they might need it for cooking. Prosthetics, braces, and crutches, and the luggage. All of those suitcases that contained everything the prisoners could carry they were told they would get them back. And the shoes, a mountain of shoes, so many little ones. In another room, the book of names, the names of the dead, millions of names. At Auschwitz Birkenau, many of the barracks are gone, though their chimneys stand, marking the landscape like monuments. This barrack has been preserved. These bunks held five or six adults. There was no running water or sanitation. Auschwitz-Birkenau is massive. It was a killing factory, ruthlessly efficient as prisoners packed in rail cars were brought here and either sent immediately to the gas chamber or ordered to work before they were murdered. With few exceptions, those sent to Auschwitz died. There are the ruins of the crematoria, Monuments to mass murder dynamited by SS guards in attempt to destroy evidence. it wasn't such a pretty day. At the back of the camp, next to another crematorium, we came upon a meadow with chirping birds, shade trees, and wildflowers. One member of our group called it God's Memorial. I 
think the Holocaust showed me emotions that I'm not used um, to seeing and in a different way that I've been experiencing it and it really brought in my perspective on everything that I've been taught and everything that I learned and everything that I will take from it from here on. In a day, I'll be back to living life as a college student, going through my day-to-day -day routine, which now seems more mundane than ever. People will ask me, how was it? What did you see? No answer seems adequate, but I can tell you that what I did see, I will see forever. Yeah, right now. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't have a car. Well, what do you want me to do? I'm already here, all right? I'm just gonna see how far I can... You don't know that. Are you, are you sure you can't just like come meet me halfway? Or mar me or someone? Okay. No, no. I left it like you told me to. It's not with me. I mean it this time. That's okay. I just thought I'd ask. See you soon. that. Leave it. I'm not taking that with me. Uh, it, it's sealed. It's not going to get out or anything, I promise. Hey, 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 wait, wait! Come on! Where are you headed? 
up the road. What's in the jacket?
Yeah. No, dude, the party was crazy. Some kid brought a pig from their farm and it got loose in the house. Yeah, I know. Well, that's not what she said. Are you serious? Well, what am I gonna do? Whatever. Yeah, I'm not the one driving a Prius. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, no, I can't that day. I, I gotta hit the gym and pretend to work out. Uh, Mom, I'm gonna go. Yo, can I help you, dude? Are you okay? Hey, hey, well, calm down, man. Just relax. Hey, dude, hey, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. to the place. Looks so chic. Amy, we haven't been here since she renovated the basement. Right? I don't think any of us have. Last time she and I talked was four or five months ago. Well, okay, Evelyn, it's not like it's a competition how much we can buy. So perfect. Like an Ikea catalog. Well, she seems to be doing just fine. <sighs> Mike, Frank here was just talking about bothering her. So I was just saying it's been a while since we talked. Anyways, where is Ivy? Hey guys, sorry for the wait. Speak of the devil. She's not trying. But, um, so, and so we can with Frank's promotion, things are just it. We're very blessed. Amy and I just bought our first Roomba. Oh. Like a vacuum? Well, yeah. It's a robot. It memorizes a virtual map of its surroundings. I, I know and, and what a Roomba is. I'm just, I'm so happy for you two. Coffee or tea, Ivy? Coffee. Milk or cream? Cream. Can't drink it straight anymore? I mean, no, I guess there's been nothing bitter to drink about. Things are well then. Do you like tea still? Of, of course I do. This is one thing that hasn't changed. I'm sorry. We just haven't seen you in so long. I... Excuse me. Everything good? Everything great.
So, Ivy, um, you really killed it on the salad. Oh, thanks. The dressing is, is so delicate and and smooth. What did you What did you use? Ranch. Mm hmm. Um, like ranch, ranch. I usually just say it once, but yeah. <laughs> so, Ivy, how has your work been? Um, great. Uh, a little busy, but very fulfilling. I I hear Frank got a big promotion. Oh, it's it's nothing. Well, it's not nothing. The benefits are insane. I get a work phone, a credit card, and a car. You see the Audi part? <laughs> Ivy, this is so adorable. Anyways, it's nothing. I really can't complain. And you? How did that basement renovation go? Basement? Um, yeah, good. Uh, oh, yeah. Amy, are you looking you for something? How that went. What did yeah, you end up doing thing. with the Guys. basement? Guys, oh, normal basement things, Amy. I am just truly very impressed by your, for lack of a better word, blow up. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see it. Are you all finished down there? Um, I am. I mean, they're finishing touches. Guys, if Ivy doesn't want to, she doesn't have to. Oh, Ivy, the store handle seems loose. Amy, no! What was that? Amy, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, Do you need some space? No, I'm, I'm Let's I'm, give her some space. Ivy, what's down there? It's not me. I'm... Ivy, what are you saying? You can let us in. That is you. You don't have to hide anymore, okay? Hey, thanks. And we'll be sure to be back for more of that salad. Stay in touch, promise. You know our house is open, always. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, all of you. I'll try, I promise.
today's video, you'll learn four habits that will let you feel confident in almost any situation. We'll do this by analyzing some clips of Jake Gyllenhaal, someone who effortlessly projects a fun, confident attitude. This sweater is destroyed. It's done. Or it's the new ring. How do you wear the sweater? The first step if you want to be confident in any situation is to learn to laugh at yourself. For example, watch Jake in this next clip. He's being forced to read something he said about Hugh Jackman to Hugh Jackman. His strength comes from an engine of porn. <laughs> An engine of vulnerability, you gotta love that. Wow, well, us actors are really pretentious, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs>
Joining us tonight for an exclusive interview on The Late Night Show with Ian, live from Hughes, is Toast. Thank you. From yeah. the film Toast. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah. Wheat, I mean, wheat, I mean, wheat thin. Uh, what's up, Toasty? Oh, uh, you know, nothing much. I'm just glad to finally be out here at High Bridge Film Festival as a gluten-free man. Gluten-free. The best. Um... I will say, you look real good after all that time behind bars. Did you hit the gel gym much? Oh, yeah, you know, this dough ain't gonna need itself, am I right? They never do. (laughs) They never do. One last question. Is there anything that time in prison has taught you? Yeah, yeah. You know, before I went to prison, I used to get really burnt up over things that people would do to me. So then I had some contemplation time, and I realized I need to learn to treat people butter. And so... (laughs) I've decided that my New Year's resolution in the middle of the year will be to loaf my neighbor. Loaf your neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Also, I learned the importance of your vote. Voting is very important. Can you vote? No. Yeah, I guess not. Well, you guys can vote. Um, As you can see... Uh, There's a number right here that you can type into your phone and a QR code that you can scan and go ahead and type in your favorite movie's number. I think you should vote for Toast. I'm not biased or anything. Alrighty, and as you guys are doing that, please turn your attention to the screen as we show last year's intro to film production movie, Myron, by Kylie Ward. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't really notice that anybody was sitting there. I, I, I just didn't see that I... I'm sorry. I'm Jordan. I can move if you want me to. It's really not a problem. I don't care to... Okay, um, I'm sorry. I really can't, but thank you. I appreciate it. No, no, I I can't, but I'll see you around.
Hey, hey, uh, Jordan. Hey, how are you? I'm I'm doing okay. How's it going? It's it's going okay. I just I'm just getting uh, pretty busy. You know. Oh, um, yeah. I I I've been meaning to ask you about all of that. Um, yeah, I know. I'm I'm trying to get my grad school applications in on time and public classes and practices. I guess I can, um,
I'm sure you guys are wondering why we're in sheets. This will all make sense eventually. Um, the high school film, Sheets. Yeah. Okay, let's give a final round of applause for all these films. Now, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's award time! Awards time. Um, Reagan and I thought it would be a nice change of pace this year to announce our own Highbridge Faculty Awards, HFA. The HFA. 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 Why not? You now, start our, first, off? our first award for Best Director of a Fire Drill goes to Madeline Black! Woo! Yeah, Madeline! Yeah. <laughs> um, best Hair and Makeup goes to... Drum roll, please. President Kevin Brown for, <laughs> for his wonderful toupee in that Welcome Back video. Mm, it's pretty iconic. Yeah, love the video. Now... Best stunt double for Dwayne The Rock Johnson goes to... Don Mink! Don Mink! <laughs> you guys are identical. I mean, they're basically twins. Every time I see you in multicam, I'm like, what's The Rock doing at Why Asbury is University? teaching multicam lab? Mm -hmm. Last but not least, best email publicist goes to... Miss Tina Miller. Man, that's 
steak night graphic goes hard. That steak night graphic went very hard. Made me really want to eat I steak. I really you know? want steak right now. Yeah. Well, on to the real awards. Um, we'd like to start off by presenting the best high school film, and it goes to <laughs> Sheets. Two sheets. I'm really close to that. <laughs> There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever read a book and later watched a film based on that book to pleasantly discover the environment and characters are exactly how you imagined or better? You can credit a production designer for those moments along with script writers like Nasfelds here tonight for their thoughtful scene descriptions. The role of the production designer is often an unrecognized and unsung hero on set. Although their talent is indispensable, Many, like the famous DeCure family, also here tonight, have fought for the credit on screen and support on set. Production designers translate the story, turning words from a script into a picture. During the pre-production process, designers illustrate every scene on paper or computer. As head of the art department, the production designer controls all aesthetics of the set and chooses locations with the director and producer. They determine all costumes, props, makeup, hair, and even special effects. Working closely with the director, these designers visualize the narrative triangle, which includes the mission, the protagonist, and the environment that we learned from John earlier. These are true artists who see color, texture, composition, symbolism, architecture, and perspective with an embedded lens. It is my honor to present these awards for this incredible work. The first recognizes best costume and makeup, and that award goes to Kevin Combs for David the Kid. The next award goes to Best Production Design, and we have two winners for this one. The first goes to Emily Krauss for the film Toast. And the next award goes to Liliana Fisher for the film Chops. Movies are as much about sound as they are about the visual experience. Uh, behind the scenes, boom operators, sound mixers, sound effects editors, music composers work countless hours to create a world of sound 
that draws you into the story and brings the images to life. This year's winners have demonstrated this with their excellent work. The winner for best sound design goes to Danny Baraka and John Golden for Chops. And the winner this year And the winner this year for best original score goes to Ian Wang for Chops. Special effects are crucial when it comes to helping the audience suspend their disbelief and enter into the world of the story. They can be big and filled with explosions, or they can be as simple as revealing something that you didn't know was there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I worked on that for like five whole minutes, so there you go. Have at it. <laughs> and the award for best visual effects goes to Andrew Stratton for Up the Road. Well, if you've taken one of my classes, you've probably heard me say that good cinematography is like painting with composition and lighting. Uh, it's the goal to take you into the world of the story by focusing your eye on what's most important. And it also is about creating a mood that resonates with the story's themes. And in all about this is using the experience and the science of optics to express the emotions of the characters. So it's a lot of stuff. And the award for best cinematography this year goes to Gavin Reed for Toast. for the Superhero Awards, the real unseen heroes of filmmaking. Editors are like Doctor Strange, the Marvel master of the mystic arts. He has the ability to manipulate time, space, and reality itself. Much like an editor, he takes raw elements and uses his skills and knowledge to create something magical and powerful. Just as Doctor Strange must have a deep understanding of the mystical world in order to manipulate it, editors must have a deep understanding of storytelling, pacing, visual and visual communication to manipulate raw footage and create a cohesive story. 
They have the ability to see beyond what is in front of them, to visualize the end product and to make the necessary decisions and adjustments to get there. Editors are the Dr. Stranges of our film industry, doing their work with precision, dedication, often under intense pressure and without seeking recognition for their efforts. So tonight, we recognize at least one, which is Tyler Chong for Laundry Day. Documentary filmmakers are like Superman or Supergirl. Superman and Supergirl are known for incredible strength and speed, but also for their ability to see and hear things others cannot. Documentary filmmakers have the ability <laughs> to capture moments and stories that might otherwise go unnoticed. They can transport us to different worlds, they have the power to change hearts and minds, to inspire action, and to bring about social change. So our super girl tonight is Gracie Turner. For the First order I'm going to talk about is a new one, so I'm going to have to do a little explanation. The Blake and Shannon Bailey Storytelling Award is a $5,000 grant to go towards making a movie based off of the best screenplay submitted to the competition. The contest is open to sophomores and juniors, and the movie is to be made starting next fall. We look for entertaining scripts that utilize the power of story to challenge audiences. The, skip, the scripts reflect the goals of Asbury, academic excellence reflected in professional craftsmanship, and spiritual vitality reflected in the redemptive themes. We judge the screenplays on originality, dramatic premise, visual storytelling, character work, heart, and entertainment value. I am proud of this year's winner in the quality of the writing and in the thoughtful way the script reflects Asbury's values. It is a wonderful way to kick off the first year for this award. The script's story tells the journey of a young boy and his often contentious relationship with his mother, surviving early strict and restrictive piano lessons, growing into the independence and separation of the teenage and college years, on through the role reversals and forgiveness of aging adulthood. This is a musical journey, scored by classical sounds to accompany the classical and complex relationship of parent and child. I am honored to announce the Bailey Storytelling Award goes to the screenplay, Piece by Piece by Ian Wong. The next award is for Best Screenplay. According to Raymond Chandler, the challenge of screenwriting is to say much in little and then take half of that little out and still preserve an effect, the effect of leisure and natural movement. Dee Reese notes, I care about subtext. If you get that right, the text will flow. Tonight we honor a screenplay that absolutely says much with little that is all about the subtext, that gives space for text to flow. The winner for Best Screenplay, Danny Baraka, Chops. <laughs> the
The next award is for Best Actor. Stella Adler notes, the word theater comes from the Greeks. It means the seeing place. It is the place people come to see the truth about life and social situation. Sanford Meisner reminds actors to find in yourself those human things which are universal. The performer we are honoring tonight has done just that, wonderfully found the universal human thing and gave us a seeing place. The winner for Best Actor, for Up the Road, Gavin Oakley Reed. The next award is for Best Actress. Jack Lemmon gives this advice. If you really do want to be an actor who can satisfy herself and her audience, you need to be vulnerable. Stella Adler tells us, life beats down and crushes the soul, and art reminds us that you have one. Tonight, we honor a performer who allowed herself to be vulnerable in order to remind us that we have beautiful, glorious souls, souls worth protecting and cherishing. The award for Best Actress for How's Ivy, Caitlin McCracken. Good evening. You guys having a good time so far? Okay. Wait, let's gauge that again. There you go. Because now we're getting to the big ones, guys. You ready? Let me make my notes. Make sure they're the right way. That'd help. At the Oscars this year, Daniel Kwan was precise with his words when accepting his co directing award. He said, there is greatness in every person. You have a genius that's ready to erupt. You just need to find the right people to unlock that. A wise director knows the wisdom in Kwan's words and looks to collaborate with people that will not just hear their vision, but make it better than they could have ever imagined. They learn the value of their crew, listen to their ideas, and work to empower those around them to unlock those inner geniuses thereby unlocking their own. Great directors learn that their job is not in imposition or in causing trauma to their cast or crew for the sake of their art. Yes, they need to be a passionate storyteller, but more importantly, they need to be a collaborator, a coach, and a leader with a servant heart. Kwan continued his speech later that night, adding, I think one of the things that I realized growing up was that one of the best things we can do for each other is shelter each other from the chaos of the crazy world we live in. For a film set, the director must be that vessel, must be that beacon, that example, that voice. This year's best director has that voice, and I hope and pray he continues. This year's best award for, or award for best director goes to Travis Kane Price for Toast. Director Mike Nichols once said, the only safe thing to take is a chance. Producing a film is tough work and requires persistence, patience, and above all, passion. Some producers can work on one project for years before it actually gets produced. You have to love film to get films made. And while it can be true that more funding can open up more doors, 
As filmmakers, we, be we learn to work with what we have and find that creativity lies not within our budget, <laughs> but in the resources we do have and the drive we have to tell our stories. As Christopher Nolan put it, when you're doing films just with friends with no money on a shoestring, you have to be able to do all the jobs. And it's a wonderful way to learn everything. And this year, our producers did just that. Everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> yeah, you like them, right? <laughs> and they took chances on people, on an idea, and themselves. This year's award for best picture goes to John Michael Hurd for Toast. And our last award, at least from me, is our Servant Leader Award. Filmmaking is more than creating a film for your audience. It's about the people you collaborate with, the artists that you either deflate or empower. Any good filmmaker is a, that is a good leader knows the value of encouragement, the power of listening, their team, and truly valuing seeing and serving those that are journeying with them on their endeavor to create art for others. This is the reason for the Servant Leader Award. Every year, students nominate those they've worked with that have exemplified the values of listening, supporting, encouraging, empowering, and serving others in their set in a Christ-like way. The winner of the award this year has a way of making every person she speaks with feel truly seen. I know I've had that experience when speaking with her myself. She takes the time to know and hear people and it was no surprise to hear this written about her in her nomination. She truly embodies what it is to be a, ser a servant leader. She is willing to go above and beyond for anybody and everybody. Although I am lucky enough to call her my best friend, I know that she will go out of her way to help me in any way, and I know that would happen even if we were simply acquaintances. There is nothing that she does not give her full effort to and does not only bring her many talents and skills to every set she goes to. She always brings her contagious joy and her Christ-filled spirit. I think she'll continue to do this, and I pray that she does. This year's Servant Leader Award goes to Faith Osborne. All right, it's the moment you've been waiting for, the Audience Choice Award. Are you ready? The votes have been tabulated. All right, now I'm afraid to have breakfast. Toast, Travis King Toast. If you all could scooch this way, we're going to do the photo op here before we move on. So try to get together as much as possible. Come this direction if you can, because I'm not important. You guys are. And we'll get the uh, photo ops. If you've got your own photos, go ahead. Right there is the official one. There you go. All right, let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank 
Monica. She's gonna take you to Miller. All right, that was Highbridge Film Festival. Uh, what up, guys? So, yeah. So our best actress, Katie, and audience choice, Kane. Y'all are gonna go with Becca. She's gonna take you over to do interviews. Um, but right that like, about oh, wraps oh. up Highbridge Film Festival. And yeah. you know what's next? It's time to party! It's the after party. Yeah, it's the after party. So if you guys would exit the back row, uh, back doors, the exit doors in the back, which are the front of Hughes, so that's kind of confusing. Yeah, the front weird. of Hughes, back doors, um, and then just follow the sidewalk all the way to Miller. Should be pretty simple. Just yeah. follow the crowd. It's fine. Anyways, it's been an honor and blessing to host you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. Have a good night. Let's go, baby. Come on now. I mean, I earned a few things. Well, what a night. We had a chance to see some incredible films and some well-deserved awards for the students. We are now joined by our film expert of the night, Luke Clark. Luke, can you fill us in a bit about some of the details on some of those films we just watched? I'd love to. Asa, thank you for having me. Like you, I enjoyed all of the films from this year's top picks, but I'd like to go over a few and dissect the unique things that they accomplished. To start off, Ian, I... <laughs> Ian Wong's film, How's Ivy, is about a dinner between some concerned friends. Personally, this film hit all the marks for me. It was truly well-rounded. I was captivated by the story. Each plot twist and reveal had me stricken. It was a very fun ride. Now, Asa, there was one thing that stood out to me about this short film. I'd like to touch on one of the opening scenes of How's Ivy, which shows all of Ivy's friends waiting for her in the living room. In this moment, it felt very engaging to me and that's because it was shot in a very unordinary way that enhances that set engagement. Normally, a scene is filmed with multiple cameras at multiple times so that those clips can be edited and the director has more room for creativity. In this opening scene, however, the same camera follows each character as the action unfolds and the camera never stops rolling. The cameraman's use of this technique gets the audience to feel less like they're watching the scene and more like they're part of the scene. And I, I, I couldn't agree with you more, but where might have some of our viewers at home seen this technique before? This single shot idea has been used in very award-winning win films such as 1917. I'm very impressed that the crew used it in this film. Travis Kane Price's film Toast was about a man being haunted and attacked by a piece of toast. <laughs> This film gave me big thriller comedy vibes, honestly, and it was so much fun. This is a very odd genre that isn't too easy to pull off, but Travis Price did just that. This movie would scare me into thinking the hero might not be safe, but at the same time I was laughing at the silliness of how the hero approaches the toast problem, because in the end, the situation is rather silly, and yet intense all the way. Really, you're right, that genre is hard to pull off, but something that's even more hard to pull off are the visual effects in Toast, right? Oh, absolutely. Those were what stood out to me the most in his films, the visual effects. Toast may seem like a simple story that's set in a regular location, a man's house, but in filmmaking, sometimes even the simplest of things takes a lot of work to look good. The visual effects were used in computer generating things like smoke from the toaster, the heat waves in the oven, or the backside of the jelly letters on the wall. We even see it used in the last image of the movie, which shows the house in the background with a giant hole burnt into the roof. In all these cases, the look was very convincing. I have to give a big shout out to Chris Phelps for creating those visual effects. Danny Baraka's film, Up the Road, is a story of one man's courage to let go of a creature in a jar that he holds onto. Baraka is a name you'll likely recognize after tonight, with two of his films making it into Highbridge, Up the Road and Chops. Danny proves his abilities as a director by making two stories that are vastly different. And I was impressed to see his wide range. There are some unexpected jobs that come with directing and producing, but you must find a way through it. Baraka's film, Up the Road, was filmed on a public space, the road. And one does not simply place glass jars on the road when they need to film. Now, with it being filmed in such an interesting location, there was a special credit at the end of the movie, wasn't there? It is, and that's what makes it all possible. You may have noticed that in the credits of Up the Road, it lists a special thanks to the Nicholasville Police Department. This is because the producer, Sarah Gould, contacted the department and informed them of the situation so that the film crew could use that road in unusual ways without getting in trouble. A good producer lets those offering their services know what's going on. Communication is key. John Michael Hurd gave us the film Doug and Wilt, which follows a conversation between a man and his dead brother. 
Asa, I like this movie. It was sweet and it was encouraging. I thought it took a very simple scene and made it interesting by writing the writing of the two characters' conversations. No, it was really interesting and engaging as two people who have brothers and you know what other writing elements though about this film in particular maybe impressed you there were ones that impressed me this film did an excellent job at progressing with each line we learn more and more about the characters the best moments of this comes when wilt mentions their dad's death this reveals that doug and wilt are brothers and hugely deepens the meaning of their conversation i also don't think it's a coincidence that this reveal happens right in the halfway point of the movie from here we can now see the situation in its true form, and we anticipate how the characters are going to handle it. This movie was nice. It took a simple, well-set story, gave it deep meaning, an objective, a struggle, a purpose. Speaking of simple, there was a film that really embodied that word tonight. There was. Tyler Chong's film, Laundry Day, is about a man losing his sock and losing his temper. Now, Asa, this movie for me was just pure fun. It creates drama and comedy out of something we can all relate to. I got a good laugh out of the intensity that builds up around this one sock, especially in the end, when he finds out that the sock was in the hallway the whole time. Well, it takes a lot to make a, a simple set like a laundry look so good, doesn't it? It does, but this short film impressed me in the way that it made that small room feel like a whole world. Mm. Aside from two hallway shots, the entire film takes place in a laundry room, a very small and uninteresting place. But the filmmakers still make the story of this room a captivating one. Now this is done through various tricks, such as the glowing blue lights along the walls, having the character explore every nook and cranny, and placing the cameras in lots of places so that we can see multiple different angles. All of this together makes the room feel bigger than it actually is, which gets us, the audience, immersed into the world of that movie. And that immersion, Asa, is something I think every filmmaker should strive for. All right, now I'd like to talk about our last pick here, Nicholas Jorgensen's film, Yours Maple. This is the last, but certainly not the least of our reviews, as this film had good writing, editing, music, filming, and of course, acting. What stood out to me most was the story, because I really wasn't sure what would happen next. However, what I'm gonna talk about here is a writing trick that screenwriter Ian Wong used most cleverly. In script writing, there's a term known as the opening image and the closing image. As you can guess, these two work hand in hand. The opening image sets up the stage, showing the audience who the characters are, what their relationship is. In yours, Maple, the opening image is Maple narrating her letter to Teddy, while we see a montage of the two characters looking happy. Then comes the closing image. It looks almost the same, sounds almost the same, but one thing has changed, and that one change shows how the characters are not the same people they were at the beginning. In this movie, our closing image is, once again, Maple's letter and the two of them looking happy. However, now they're not together. They're going separate ways. This is the mic drop, the big reveal, and it perfectly brings the story together. I thought it was a great job on the writer and director's part. Couldn't have said it better myself, Luke, and I do agree that is a perfect way to end that story, and it is a perfect way for us to end our segment, isn't it? It is. I will be talking about tonight, but I hope you get a chance to watch them again sometime in Highbridge Film Festival website, where our live cast recordings will stay up. This really has been a special night, and I hope the cast and crew of these films have felt the full pride and joy of seeing their hard, good work brought to the silver screens where it belongs. Asa, it's been great talking with you, but that's all the analyses I have for you tonight. Well, Luke, it's been great having you here, and thank you. But like we saw earlier in the show, there is a lot that goes into directing a hybrid film. Ian Wong made a video for The Collegian in tandem with our video team that showed just that. Let's take a look. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Hi, Michael. John Michael Hurd. Um, people call me Michael. My name is Ian Wong. I am part of the Courageous class. I'm a junior. My name is Danny Baraka. Uh, I am Surrendered Class. My name is Travis Price, but I go by Kane. I am a senior here, and I am part of the Surrendered Class. And so my film is Doug and Wilt. It's a dark comedy. Doug and Wilt is about a man who shows up to his older brother's funeral to f share a final drink and uh, kind of seek closure, um, and some unexpected events occur. My film is How's Ivy? Question mark. How's Ivy is about a young woman named Ivy who invites four of her friends over for a casual dinner. And as they try to dig deeper into how she's doing, um, they realize that there's more than meets the eye. 
I directed Chops and Up the Road. So Chops is a film about a musician who's very passionate about what he does and very intent on improving at what he does. Up the Road is a film about a young man who's trying to get home and he's hitchhiking to try to get home, uh, but he's got this jar with him. So my film is Toast and it is a horror comedy. Um, it's a satire take on horror comedy. It's about a man who gets up in the morning and he burns his toast and he's haunted by it the rest of the day. My favorite memory from the film, trying to uh, find a casket, but we had to fill the inside with like bedding and sheets to make it look like it was like an actual casket. It was kind of funny. I mean, there were all kinds of jokes about, it. yeah. So it was, it was an interesting uh, experience for that reason, I think. I think my favorite memory from shooting House Ivy um, was the very last shot that we had. The battery I had for my camera had about a minute left on it. Everybody who was not in the shot was just gathered around the camera and just praying that we could get that last shot in. And I thought that reflected how hard my cast and crew worked with me on this project. Uh, crafting the score with Ian Wong, it was super fun to do that and just to see um, kind of my vague, like what I wanted with the score and really turn it into something that's really cool and that makes sense in the film. Uh, shooting up the road, I think 45 minutes into shooting, um, Gavin, the lead, hit the jar in the scene and it just cracked. And Drew uh, handled it so well, he just said, I'll just make another jar. And he redid a lot of work in half an hour to get us back on our feet shooting. And that was very stressful, but looking back on it was very, just a good memory. My favorite memory on set was probably getting to work with Nick Jorgensen, just seeing the script and my vision for how it was portrayed come to life was really, like, it was perfect. With so many directors being celebrated tonight, for two young directors, tonight is especially special. Ethan and Everett Wald had a high, a high school film that made it into Highbridge. While it wasn't in a category for an award, the experience of being in the festival as a high schooler is an honor. Our live reporter, Addie Smith, is joined by the two now to discuss their film. I'm here with the Wold Brothers who just won Best High School Film. So can you tell me what the inspiration was for this film? Well, you know, you always see uh, sheet ghosts, whether it be like third grade Halloween costumes. And I always thought, you know, what would it be like if the ghosts weren't ghosts, but instead sheets, specifically a stain sheet. And I kind of just took that, ran with it. Well, we did. And then, yeah. Perfect. So what was the most challenging part of creating this film? Yeah, I think it was like dealing and directing the cast we had because we had a pretty large amount of people who were working on the project and also the weather. It was kind of cold on the days we were filming it. So it got pretty cold and our hands got cold and it's sort of difficult to manage stuff. But it was stressful, but it, eventually we got through it and worked. So I know a lot of people are wondering, why spaghetti? <sighs> well... Spaghetti is just a great food. We can all admit that, right? It's a comfort food. It's, it's whatever. And, you know, when you sit down and watch a movie, you get some leftovers. And, you know, just gouge down. Yeah, exactly. So what was your favorite part of this whole experience? Of this experience? Yeah. I think making it was awesome. I think it was awesome to be able to, yeah, create a process. So do you think it was intimidating having it shown with a bunch of collegiate films? Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. I think I think we can both speak for this when we say. I was like shaking the entire time. Because it's like, uh, you know, who? how will they react? Will it be funny? Yeah. So I know siblings fight. My siblings fight. So did you guys fight during this? Sort of. Sort of, yeah. We, we bicker, but you know. When it comes to creatives. Right, yeah. But we sort of level each other off. You know, we play off each other and, uh, you know, eventually come up with something that works. All right, perfect. Congratulations and thank you guys so much. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, thank you so much, Addie, and thank you so much for joining us, Kane, and congratulations on winning Best Director. Well, first things first, man, how are you feeling? What's going through your mind? Um, my stomach hurts like I need to use the bathroom a little bit. Uh, this is my first hybrid going like going to it and putting something in it, so that was fun winning something. Well, could you maybe tell us a little bit about all the visual effects that went into making this film? Yeah, so um, a lot of our digital effects were done by Chris Phelps, 
like the burnt down house, the heat coming from the oven and the toaster catching on fire, like the smoke. And then the jelly on the wall was Emily Krause. She made that with uh, like hot glue and she colored it. And we put it on uh, some glass and stuck it to the wall. And that's how we got that shot. And then we just took it off the wall and shot right through it for the, the shot right after. So, wow. Well, did another piece of work maybe inspire you to help you make toast? Um, there were lots of things. I mean, we, I took some inspiration from just in general Sam Raimi's work how he has fun with things. Um, some Edgar Wright, I know he always has some fun camera stuff going on. And just inspiration as a whole from the movie, I like to say uh, I was really inspired by Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed, just because that movie scared me as a kid, but it was funny. So I was like, I want to do that, kind of. It's funny you say that. Uh, Scooby-Doo 2 scared me as well as a child, <laughs> some of the opening scenes. But well, last but not least, how do you plan on celebrating tonight? Um, I'm going to go eat some food in Miller, and then after the after party, me and a group of friends are going to go to Bucky's, and I don't know, have fun at Bucky's. Well, while Kane gets hit, the start of his night underway, we are going to take at one of our favorite scenes from his movie, Toast. All righty. So much for sitting down with me tonight, best actress of the night. Man, how do you feel? I'm dizzy and I need <laughs> dinner. Yep. That's, that's the I first mean, thought. We've yeah. got the Chick-fil-A truck downstairs, <laughs> yes. so I think you're all set. After this, yeah. we've got cookies. We can sit down there, hang out. Yeah. Awesome. So did you anticipate winning? What were your thoughts? Like, No. <laughs> um, really? I, I definitely didn't. Um, I was kind of... So I'm originally more of a theater actress, mm. and so the idea of watching myself on screen is still something I'm learning. Um, and these were some of my really like first screen acting attempts. So um, yeah, I definitely was not expecting it at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm also just very proud of everyone around me. And like Ian, who was such an amazing director for such a difficult role and um, being so, loving and kind to every cast member. So yeah, I'm very grateful. I should have added that when you asked how I was feeling. Oh, that's, well, that's not I, what I no, should have I said. I get it, I get it. There's a lot of emotions going on, man. Yeah. So when you were watching the films, was this your first time getting to watch those films back? Um, so I had seen some rough cuts um, and then I had seen the finals, um, but once I actually kind of avoided them. Yeah, <laughs> So yeah, yeah no, I get time. that, I get that. So what was actually your favorite scene out of anything by far that you got to film? Um, I think, that I got to film or that I got to watch? Ooh, both. Um, so the split scene, it was hard, the shadows were really dark in hues, but the split scene where I went from being in the corner to being in front of the camera, and I think that was my favorite to see because 
I was told like it's gonna come together and it's gonna mm. look so cool and I was like I'm waiting to see it and then it was so amazing um, to film the dinner scene was really fun I got to explore relationships with all of the different actors and it was really really fun that's so, so awesome yeah. well congrats again yeah, thank you thank so much you. for sitting down with me so oh, do you have anything that you'd like to say to everyone that helped vote for you on the panel or just oh. anyone that supported you um thank you for um, just it was such a vulnerable role it was definitely um, exhausting to film so uh, thank you to people who were recognizing that um, so yeah thank you. awesome well thank you so much and well well done getting the title man so awesome thank you. man thank you so much for sitting down with me I appreciate it I know we gotta head down to that yeah let's yeah, go ahead and <laughs> take a look at the films and then mm -hmm. once we do that we can go ahead and get some chick-fil-a awesome This door handle seems loose. Amy, no! What, what was that? Amy, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you need some space? No, I'm, I'm okay. fine. Let's give her some space. Ivy, what's down there? It's not me. I'm... Ivy, what are you saying? You can let us in. Well, I have really had a great time watching all these student-made films tonight. Rachel, any takeaways from this year's hybrids? It's definitely been a great night. Getting to see our peers get recognized for their hard work, getting to talk to them and see how awesome they've been feeling after such a wonderful night. And I think it'll certainly be tough to top these films next year. Well, that will conclude things here in the Miller studio. We just want to give a huge shout out to everyone involved with this event. And we also want to thank you at home for tuning in. And I don't know about you at home, but I'm going to make my way to the after party. I think I'm going to be right behind you.